You're listening to the Department of Defense This Week, a weekly podcast with some of the top stories from around the DOD. Last week, Defense Secretary Leon Panetta traveled to countries in Northern Africa and the Middle East to reaffirm military-to-military relationships. While traveling, he also discussed issues with the Syrian uprising and Iran's nuclear program. At a press conference in Israel, the secretary said the U.S. is committed to keeping nuclear weapons out of Iranian hands. Uh, we share, Israel and the United States, shares deep concerns about the violence that's taking place in neighboring Syria and Iran's nuclear ambitions. And I, I want to uh, reassert again uh, the position of the United States that uh, with regards to Iran, we will not allow Iran to develop a nuclear weapon, period. We will not allow them to develop a nuclear weapon. And uh, we, will, we will exert uh, all options in the effort to ensure that that does not happen. The Secretary said the U.S. is committed to security for Israel and the Mideast region as a whole. The Iron Dome facility, which you see behind me, is one example of that commitment. Since Iron Dome has been deployed, it has been a game changer for Israel's security. It has saved Israeli lives. The Iron Dome air defense system has had a success rate higher than 80 percent against rocket attacks against Israel, the secretary said. For more from the secretary's trip, visit the Travels with Panetta news special on defense.gov. Japanese Defense Minister Satoshi Morimoto joined Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta at the Pentagon Friday, August 3rd. The two leaders discussed Defense Department plans to deploy Marine Corps MV-22 Osprey aircraft to Okinawa. Some Japanese citizens have raised concerns about the aircraft's safety record after two aircraft mishaps this year, one in Africa and one in the United States. Secretary Panetta outlined the Osprey's successful track record in missions around the world and indicated the Osprey will not be fully operational in Japan until the two incident investigations are complete and turned over to the Japanese government. In a press briefing, Secretary Panetta explained the role the Osprey will play in the Pacific. The Osprey is important to the defense of Japan. It will enable Marines to fly faster and farther from Okinawa to remote islands in Japan. And with the ability to refuel in flight, it can stay aloft much longer. Minister Morimoto demonstrated the Osprey's safety with a familiarization flight from the Pentagon to Marine Base Quantico in Virginia. For more from the meeting, visit defense.gov and pentagonchannel.mil. Restrictions placed on the F-22 Raptor are being lifted. This development follows investigations into the oxygen delivery system used during high-altitude flights. At the Pentagon, Air Force Major General Charles Lyon, head of the Air Force's Scientific Investigation Board, presented the service's findings and its proposed solutions. Managing risk to our F-22 force has always been preeminent as we work through this complex set of factors. In the end, there is no smoking gun. We have assembled the pieces of the mosaic they reside in the cockpit. The Air Force is confident in its findings, General Lyon told the Pentagon Press Corps. He and his team have stayed in close contact with F-22 pilots and air crews throughout the investigation. And what I want you to know is that both they and their families have very high confidence in the F-22. We asked some very direct questions uh, through a number of surveys with our crews, and uh, there's no aircraft they would rather fly in the service to our nation than the F-22. That's how confident they are. Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta has approved a phased removal of the restrictions on F-22 flights, which included altitude and range limits for the aircraft. For more from the briefing, visit defense.gov. On Friday, July 27th, service members and veterans observed the 59th anniversary of the end of the Korean War at Arlington National Cemetery. South Korean Ambassador Choi Young-jin and Defense Secretary Leon Panetta laid a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknowns. The armistice was signed on July 27, 1953, ending the conflict in Korea. 
David Mills was in a prison camp that day, just 17 years old. My outlook for the day was no different than it had been for any other day in the prison camp. Just try to make it through, alive, without being hurt, with the hope and expectation that it would be one day closer to freedom and going home. Secretary Panetta said the anniversary of the Korean armistice is a time to show appreciation for the troops who fought and died there. This is an opportunity to remember and to pay tribute to the 54,246 U.S. service members who lost their lives in the Korean War. It's also an opportunity to celebrate the heroism, the sacrifices, the sheer grit, the determination, and the bravery of thousands of Americans who fought in the Korean War. DOD Live salutes and honors Korean War veterans' service and sacrifice and encourages our audience to follow along on defense.gov as the department begins a year-long schedule of events leading up to the 60th anniversary of the armistice. For more from the commemoration and history of the war, visit the Korean War Armistice News Special on Defense.gov. You've been listening to news brought to you by the Department of Defense. For links to these stories and much more, visit dodlive.mil or Defense.gov.